so happy you're all here uh, and happy to share some time away from the woes of the world. And um, this, this, uh, this Sunday, today, now, we're going to be looking at the shoulder girdle. Uh, <laughs> Saraswati, were there any, any, any introductory uh, remarks you wanted to make? Nope, all, all good to go. Okay, we be rolling. So I'm looking at uh, a broad perspective of the shoulder girdle as an evolutionary breakthrough in our evolutionary development as critters on this planet. The freeing of the shoulders and the releasing them from being uh, obliged to support our upper body weight and become free roving tools uh, that together with the opposing thumb has given us the freedom to be the marvelous inventive tool using environmentally interactive in all kinds of new ways that we are. And at the same time, uh, we have in uh, getting up on our two feet and liberating the shoulders from their support system, taken on a new burden because now the shoulders are sitting upon us and not supporting us from beneath. I like to begin uh, this perspective by looking at this picture. This is one of Michelangelo's sculptures in the Slave series. And what this calls to mind to me is the tightened patterns and the restricted movements that we impose upon ourselves with our habituated uh, usage of the shoulders become the mind forged manacles. That's a phrase of William Blake's. The mind forged manacles of restrictive patterns in the muscles and of the shoulder. And I want to notice that in this depiction of the slave, all that's necessary is to bind this powerful man's arms and bind his wrists. And none of that uh, interactive power is available to him. So he can be led around by a tether in a quite helpless state. In the same way, when we habituate patterns that restrict the movement of our shoulders, that situate the weight of our shoulders in one dysfunctional way or another, we have bound ourselves just as surely as these bindings of the slave. I want to look at some evolutionary perspectives of the development of this human shoulder girdle because I think it sheds some light on how these shoulders have evolved to be for us and the avenues of action and interaction that they have opened up that were not there for four-footed creatures. Taking a look. What is this? There we go. You can hear me, yes? Yes. Okay, something just interrupted my, I got a funny message on screen. <clears throat> Taking a look at this quadruped then, what I want to see is that the uh, support system of these four legs and the arrangement of the rib cage <coughs> has been, has been uh, in this manner. As this body animal's weight falls through gravity, you can see how that gravitational force has sculpted these rib ribs and the rib cage as a whole to be stretched downward from the sternum and not the roundness that we have in our, uh, in our rib cage. And the support system, muscularly speaking, for this animal on its four legs is the attachment of the latissimus dorsi here uh, along the border of the scapula down to the rib cage. Here's a look at that as we peel it back and look at these fibers of the uh, serosis anterior going from the scapula connections over to the ribs. That forms a sling, 
a hammock in which this four-footed creature is resting on its forelegs. So the primary function then of this uh, serratus anterior is to provide that hammock, that sling, and a limited amount of forward and back movement of the forelegs as the fibers of the serratus change their length to swing a leg forward, to swing a leg back. But that's about it. The serratus anterior then in a four-footed creature becomes the hammock and a limited range of movement of legs fore and back for its locomotion patterns. So what we see as we uh, look at this uh, quadruped structure from the side then and add the human perspective is again this sling of serratus anterior supporting the weight, the gravity of the rib cage being pulled downward so it becomes that long elongated oval shape. And when we finally as human beings, uh, either evolutionary or through our own infancy development, achieve this upright posture, a completely different situation ensues. The four legs have now been freed to become fully mobile elements of our anatomy. And <laughs> the rib cage itself has changed its shape through time and through forces of gravity. So what we have as a rib cage then is not that elongated oval resting in a sling from the shoulder blades in the serratus anterior, but the complete rearrangement of the scapula as it is now not situated on the side of a four-footed creature, but has swung back to open up the expanse of the frontal uh, elements of movement of this shoulder. And as that through time has uh, evolved slowly, the gravitational attraction drawing down of these ribs has shifted from pulling in this direction to distributing that gravitational weight all around a full circle of the rib cage. And over time, this has given us the roundness of our own rib cage, as opposed to the long oval of an earlier stage of quadruped rib cage. <clears throat> and in the fullness of time, that evolution from quadruped to biped has gone through an intermediate phase where in the primate structure, the arms are free in a, to do their thing, but they are also important support elements in this, uh, in this creature's arrangement in gravity. And note how the rib, rib cage of this primate is much larger on the bottom uh, end of the rib cage than it is on the top. Note the difference in ourselves where there is a much more evenly distributed length of ribs and lift of sternum than this creature in this posture has assumed. And again, because of the primate stoop, a much larger densifying of uh, enlarging and densifying of the bone of the pelvis has taken place and massive uh, sits bones have evolved to hold the powerful uh, leg muscles that cantilever this upper body in its uh, slump forward posture uh, requires. Now, another element of that primate life was not only uh, walking on the ground in that stoop posture, partially, partially supported by forelimbs, but the hanging from trees. And this hanging from trees and the swinging from limb to limb and the reaching for food out in the sphere of uh, the tree's uh, source of nourishment have added this lengthening process of arm muscles connecting down to sternum, 
uh, I mean, connecting down to shoulder blade, through the muscles of the pectorals and the ab abdomen that have served to lift as gravity pulls down, this upper rib cage gets a lift in this swinging, hanging creature. And that even more fully completed the opening of that expansive chest and